Hi, welcome to the video. We'll be looking at how to use Vue.js, JSON Server, and Axios to create this little to-do application that you can see on screen. So the way that this is going to work, it's going to have this sort of API that we're going to create, and that's going to be at slash to-dos. We're going to have this on localhost, and that's going to be using something called JSON Server. We're also going to be using Axios to sort of interface with that API, and we'll be using Vue.js. So as always, the article for this video is over at developer.school. I'll put that inside of the description. And with that in mind, let's make sure we've got the Vue CLI installed by running npm install g at Vue slash CLI. Then at that stage, we'll create a new Vue project, select the default configuration, cd into the directory, open this up inside of VS Code, and then of course, we'll run npm run serve. This will of course run this inside of the browser, and we'll be able to start development. Now that we've got a blank Vue.js project up and running on our screen, we can add JSON server. This is effectively a local JSON API. And the way that we get started with this is before we even install anything, we can create what's known as a db.json. So this is essentially a JSON representation of our API. And we'd have to-dos, which would be a simple array. And I'm just gonna copy in the to-dos here from the article itself, but as you'll see, it's super simple. So we have an ID of zero, a name of go to the gym, and this continues down for the other to-dos. So we have now a fairly standard to-do list. And what we need to do is install JSON server. That can be done by simply going over to the terminal and running npm install json-server-g. I've already got this on my machine, so I don't need to do that, but you may. You could also install it inside of the project too, if you didn't want to do it locally, uh, sort of globally on your machine. But I'm going to make the assumption that you most likely want to use JSON server elsewhere. So then we can say json-server db.json. So this is pointed toward that db.json. And when we hit enter, you should see that we have an API open on localhost 3000. But I already have a JSON server up and running for another project. So I'll have to close that one first. So once that has been closed, we can run the command again and we should get a success message. And if we just make this a little larger, we should be able to see hi from a JSON server. And now we have this localhost 3000 uh, slash to do's. If we go ahead and navigate to that inside of the browser, we can see the to do's on screen. Next up, I want to get the HTTP data inside of our application. So we'll get this array inside of our app. Now there's multiple ways which we can do that. You can do that with fetch. Now I've got an article and a video on fetch, but we're gonna use Axios this time. So we'll use npm install Axios. Now the great thing about using fetch as an example is that fetch would be available straight up inside of our JavaScript. So we wouldn't have to install anything. Axios is of course a third party library. So we would have to install that. Once that has finished, we can now put it inside of app.view. So we can go back over to app.view and inside of here, we can get rid of that components and the hello world. Then we can import Axios from Axios. That will give us the import. And then we can set a data object. That data object can simply return to do's as an empty array. So at this stage, we'll have an empty selection of to do's. We can then render out the empty to do's at this point inside of our template, like so. So we'll make a H1 that says to do's, and then we'll have a UL and an LI. And for each one of the LI, we'll iterate over that with something called V-4, similar to NG4, if you're sort of interested in Angular. We'll say to do of to do's. We'll also bind the key to to do.id. This just lets Vue know which the sort of unique to do is. So we'll say to do.nim. And when we save that, we should see, of course, to do's and nothing else. If we add something to the array, such as ID of one and name of hello to do's, 
we should see hello to do's on screen. So at this stage, we now can display those to do's, but it isn't the to do's from our database. So for that, we'll need something called created. This is a lifecycle hook, and we'll make that async because we're going to be dealing with Axios at this point. So we'll say try to get the response of await axios.get, and we want HTTP localhost 3000 slash to do's. Then we can set this dot to do's equal to the response dot data. If on the circumstance we don't get those to do's, then we'll simply log out the error. Once we save the file, we can then see that we have those three to do's on screen. We also might want to go down to our style and just select list item and we'll set that list style equal to none. So now we can see the to do's. We can also get rid of the margin and padding. So this is sort of where the main functionality of our application is right now inside of this created hook. We aren't having to call created because this is a lifecycle method. So this means that the created gets called by view itself. And then at this stage, we can run this code. But what if we wanted to add to do's to our API? Well, that's quite simple. We can then above our export default, we can take this URL that we have here. So we can simply cut that out. And inside of our script, we can say const base URL is equal to that to do's. And then we can say to do name, we'll put that to be simply an empty string at this stage. And down in our methods, so underneath the created, we can have a methods object. We can make an add to do method that will be async. And we can say const response is equal to await. So this is going to resolve the promise of axios.post. We want to post to the base URL. Then we want to pass along the name of this dot to do name. So this here will be the data prop that we pass to our API. We'll also at the same time just add the base URL to the created hook. That just allows us to, of course, get the to do's. Then at this stage, we can say this dot to do's is equal to, and we'll simply concatenate, or rather use the spread operator on the previous to do's and add the response. The reason that we're using res.data at this point is that the ID comes from our API. So otherwise, we'd have to come up with an ID, which doesn't exist at that moment in time. So we can't just add that based on the to-do name at that point. Or I suppose we could, but the reason that we're doing it at that moment is to, of course, get that ID. So then we can just simply reset the to-do name to an empty string. Then inside of our template, we'll simply have an input with the type of text, a V model equal to the to do name. And when we have key up dot enter, we want to push add to do. So just to recap exactly what we've done at this stage, we've added a new method called add to do. This uses that same base URL, but this time we're passing along this name object. We're also using JSON server. So this handles the new ID and sets a new ID automatically. So we don't have to create one at this stage. We're then at this moment using the spread operator and that adds all of the previous to do's to this array. And then we're appending the response and the response that we expect back is the new to do. And finally, after that, we're setting this dot to do name to be an empty string. Let's now add a new to do called buy some milk and hit enter. And when we hit enter, we should see that we get buy some milk in our to do's. Then if we check our db.json, which is the database for our application, we can see that we have this name of buy some milk and the ID of three. This is because JSON server automatically increments that ID number. So there we have it. We've created a very basic application with a REST API that we've used the get and post sort of verbs on using Vue.js, Axios, and JSON server. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, of course, hit that subscribe button and let me know what you'd like to see inside of the comments section below. 
And until my next video, I'll see you very soon in the comments.